So, uh, so far I have introduced vertex algebras and modules and uh, the end of yesterday I made an excursion just on mod modules of the finite dimensional Lie algebra SL2 in order to, uh, to illustrate how complicated already a rank one example can be. It's in particular in the sense if uh, you want, want to look at tensor products. Now um, we, uh, we would like to define a tensor product on modules of a vertex algebra that makes sense. Uh, that means that it has nice properties. And uh, one, um, the, the idea how, how to define it is just following what you know from, from linear algebra, for example. How do, def do you define a, the tensor product of two vector spaces? Um, how, how did you do that? The, 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 the tensor product of uh, two vector spaces, V times W, is, is a, a so first of all, you define an intertwining operator, which is just a linear map from V times W to a third vector space. And then the tensor product is uh, defined by a universal property. It is a third vector space uh, together with an intertwining operator, a linear map from V times W to this third vector space, called, let's call it V tensor W, such that uh, every intertwining operator factors through this. That's the universal property. So this means uh, if you now uh, uh, want to define a tensor product for, for a VOA, you want to do exactly the same thing. You want to define an intertwining operator. This means an, 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 an operator that uh, maps nicely from a pair of modules to a third module. And then, the, and then you introduce the notion of a universal intertwining operator, namely uh, the, the module together with intertwining operator, such that any other intertwining operator of that type factors through that. Um, and and, and that, uh, that then gives you at least a, a sensible notion of a tensor product. <coughs> and, uh, and then the, the next question is what properties does it have? So this means, uh, so now uh, what, what does this mean? Uh, we, so far, every, every, every action we have defined in terms of fields, right? We have said uh, uh, a vertex algebra uh, is an algebra, so it has to act on itself. You, ha itself. you have to have some kind of multiplication. Well, this multiplication is given in terms of uh, you take a vector, you get the corresponding field that acts on the vertex algebra. This is your product in some sense because it's given in terms of the field. It's a family of products. Now, next, we can go to, went to a module. Well, what is a module? It is uh, an object, a vector space on which the vertex algebra acts. So that means you have to have a map from V times module to, to the module itself. And again, we define it in the same way. The action is given by fields. So here now we have to do the same thing. We take a pair of modules, M1 and M2, and we want to define an, a, a map from M1 times M2 M, or from the pair M1 and M2 to M3. So what do we do is we take a vector in the first module, we associate to it a field. What is this field now? It's, a, it's again an, a, a formal power series, but the coefficients are now not endomorphisms on V, they are not endomorphisms on M, but they are maps from M2 to 3, homomorphisms from M2 to 3, linear maps there. And now uh, one wants to define it that, uh, that, uh, that it looks as much analogous as before, but of course a few things have to gen generalize. And you'll see the um, definition is a, is a bit long. Let me write it down. And uh, intertwining operators are also the fields uh, physicists and conformal field theories interested in. Right? So, um, so V uh, grading restricted VOA and then we take a triple of modules And now we define an intertwining operator. And the notation is, is called of type. It intertwines from the pair M1 first, then M2 to 
two M three, so of this type, is a linear map. Is and now we define it by such a curly Y from the vector space tensor product two. Um, to M3, but and now we we take power series of this type. I will define them in the, in the moment. And it turns out uh, whenever one, so if you look at old literature, this log Z will not be present. It turns out this log Z appears exactly if you have modules on which the Virasso uh, uh, algebra does not act semi-simple, and such modules appear for non-semi-simple modules of the vertex algebra itself. So, uh, so this is, uh, you will only find this log Z in the recent literature, in particular in the lecture notes of EG that I, I, uh, I sent you yesterday. In, in fact, uh, many technical details that I'm not given are included in those lecture notes. So they, they are in that direction the best resource. And um, uh, and, and the other lecture notes that you received by uh, Arakawa and Moreau, they are a little bit off from the, uh, this lecture, but they are very interesting. So it's, it's, it's just an additional resource. <coughs> um, so this uh, uh, map uh, maps the tuple of two vectors, M1 and M2, to to the, the, the field, the intertwining operator Y of M1 and, and Z acting on two, where here um, this curly symbol Z uh, is the space of formal power series of the fol following form. This pen is really good. It's much better than the last days. <laughs> so this is all immediately much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we just take a longer break and somebody has to install new boards, but that's fine with me. <laughs> so, so what, uh, what's the difference to the, the old fields? So we have a power series, here certain coefficients, a n comma h, we sum over h and n, and then z to the n, and then logarithm of z to the h. The difference is we allow for any powers, any complex powers, that's a huge difference, right? And in practice, uh, usually these powers will be still rational numbers, but, um, and just, it, as a formal power series. And here the coefficients are then all in our third module. And by uh, log z, we mean a formal variable uh, as, uh, satis satisfying that the derivative of it is one over z. Okay, um, now um, we have to require, require a bunch of axioms. The Can I miss why is written Y of M1, B, and B? What, what does that mean? Um, this is, uh, uh, so, um, you, 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 you want to uh, think it, uh, about it uh, as, as follows. This Y of M1, comma uh, Z is a, is a power series in this uh, space where the co coefficients are homomorphisms from the module M2 to M3. So that means if it acts on a vector M2 in, in M2, it becomes a formal power series of this type with coefficient in, in M3. So I, I, could, I could equally well have left this out 
in, in this definition? Did and anything other than what you No. I, I just made it explicit, and I, of course, have to, to tell you what I mean by this one. Yes, and that's uh, so. I, uh, you have to remind me. So the, uh, the the question is about the different roles of M1 and M2. And um, clearly, for a tensor product, you expect that the tensor product of M1 and M2 and M2 and M1 should be quite different. If you look at the at the definition, uh, the the role of M1 and M2 is significantly different in the definition. Right. Um, Well, in the definition of this intertwining map, oh, right? And 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 you should. Yeah. Hmm? You haven't, from anything you've written so far yet, it's not clear why it should be different. No, uh, yeah, but but you, you're just going ahead of what I'm, uh, uh, what I want to say. Um, but but it's uh, it, it's of course. Um, uh, I mean, the the uh, the. The way I define it, it's already clear that you don't necessarily expect a nice commutativity property of this product. And, and if, if you have one, that would maybe be a surprise. But, but that's a key, key thing. Uh, on this sum? Yes. So the, it's, it's polynomial in the logarithm. You only allow polynomial powers. And, but this is a sum over all complex numbers. Should we imagine that this actually is countable sum that other numbers can be there zero? You should imagine it uh, exactly. So you, you should imagine it that it's a sum over finitely many co-sets of the integers. Yeah. That is the finitely many co-sets of the integers, yeah. right? It's just somewhat misleading to write it. It's, it's, it's a little bit misleading to write it like this. Yeah, so it's... it's, it's uh, um, it's just a convenient way to write it, but yeah. Um, and um, in, in principle, it could happen that this is uh, th th this is not a countable sum. It could happen, but I, I, I couldn't give you an example of that. Right, but it, it, it's a priori not excluded. Okay, axioms. We take a vector on our first module. And uh, now we, we want to have compatibility, compa compatibility with the Virasoro algebra in the following sense. Uh, so this, this first uh, the two properties are not terribly important. Um, Yeah, so um, uh, right, uh, uh, y, um, uh, y of uh, m, um, right, okay, y of mz is uh, also a formal power series. And the coefficients, what, what are they? They are linear maps from M2 to M3. I, I didn't leave enough. Just linear maps as, as, as vector spaces. OK. And um, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. I, uh, anyway, these are what they are. And uh, we, we, are, uh, we are almost exclusively ac interested in the action of them on something. So. And we want uh, L minus 1 to act as a derivative, but it also has uh, the property that uh, 
uh, that uh, the commutator with n minus 1 is the same as the intertwining operator evaluated at n minus 1 m. I didn't mention that before because we didn't need it, but uh, uh, in particular, the VOA action on a module is an intertwining operator of type v, Vm to m, right? And uh, in that case, the, the property that this is equal to uh, this, you can... Um, can you write down what you just said about the module Yeah, uh, I'll say, do, do that in a second. The property that this is equal uh, to, to this one um, follows uh, follows uh, from the duality that I have stated. So it's, it's it just, uh, uh, so that, that would be an exercise to, to see that this is equal to this for the module action of a VUA on a module. I, uh, what I just said is, uh, that would be an example I, I could give in a few minutes is, um, the uh, um, YM for uh, M a V module, is an intertwining operator uh, what what is it it's a, it's it's a field right so that means uh, it, it's uh, the 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 coefficients um, i mean it's a map from v to endomorph uh, endomorphisms on m so that means uh, and uh, um, so that means it's, uh, it, it, it is of the form as presented there if I take for M1 V itself and for M2 M and for M3 M is it's, So it's an intertwining operator of type, type um, V M to M. In particular, if you take M equal to V itself, just the VOA action on itself is an intertwining operator of type V, V V to itself. Okay, uh, now the important um, axiom will now look quite a bit like duality. So, uh, and there is no good uh, version for, for this intertwining axiom of locality, but for the uh, generalization of the duality, you will nicely see. So uh, what do we have to do is we have to take one vector in V, one, we take one in M1, one in M2, and uh, and one in the con contragradient dual of M3. Remember, the contragradient dual is uh, is is the 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 graded dual of of this module. And uh, I stated that yesterday that the module structure uh, on M, or M3 in this case, induces a module structure on the contragradient dual. I stated this without proof. So then uh, what, what else do we need? By L of Z, we denote a single valued branch of the logarithm. with z not zero and the argument we take between zero and two pi. <coughs> so then um, we, uh, we continue as with an uh, duality. We write down now three pairings. So the for the action of M3, the contact gradient dual, so the vectors and M3 are linear maps from, from an M3 prime. And vectors in M3 prime are linear maps from M3 to C. And, and, this, this, uh, and the symbol that we use is this physics cat and bra notation. And uh, now what can we do is we can uh, look at the VOA action of the field associated to V in one variable, then we have the intertwining operator that we introduced. And uh, then here I write an x2. And this 
acts on M2. So the action of this intertwining operator of M2 gives us something in M3 on which this one act, then pairing with M3 prime gives us something, uh, uh, something in the complex numbers. Now we can also, we, we do this type of pairing now in three different ways. We can also interchange the order. Here to the left I write the intertwining operator. Hmm? I wrote a Z1, yes. Hmm? This is a Z1. It's a, um, the, co the, the, the comma and the uh, one is always looks so similar. Um, so we, we can also interchange the order, but now we, we then here have an, the VOA act map on the module M2. Right, and uh, and then so th 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 this this uh, these two you you uh, you want to have some kind of commutativity statement relating these two, and uh, the last one should be some kind of associativity statement. So what can we do is we can write the intertwining operator, now make a very big bracket, take the module action of the VUA uh, on the module M1. And now uh, we, we replace uh, Z1, uh, Z1 by Z1 minus Z2. This can act on M1. Here we take the variable again X2. And then this can act, this is an, uh, this is an intertwining operator from, uh, of type M1, M2 to M3. So we can act on the vector M2. We get something in M3. We can pair. Okay, now I, I still am not done, but you, you see these three e expressions uh, uh, look very similar like the expressions I wrote down for, for duality. I had uh, just in the duality uh, case, this, uh, the, the special, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the intertwining operator was just the module action on, on a module. Right. So in particular, uh, the, if I specialize to this special intertwining operator, I exactly get uh, the, the duality statement was that these three expansions are, uh, these three expressions are expansions of the same formal power series in their respective regions where they converge. Right. So, uh, and uh, here we want to do something similar, but I, first we observe that here I put in Z2 and here in X2, so what do I want is I, and I have one problem is uh, one problem that you see here in the definition. While for the module action, only integral powers of Z appeared. In the intertwining operator, any power of Z uh, appears. And so if I want to make some kind of analytic statement, I have to say, what do I mean by that power? So that's the, that, that's the whole purpose of introducing this X2. So what I mean by X2 to the N for any complex number N, I mean, e to the n times this chosen branch of the, of the logarithm that I chose here. And, and now here, the, the, the same thing for all three. Yeah. So good news, we don't have to get new boards. Here it's now in all cases the same. Okay, very good. Are you making an analytic statement? I mean, what does it mean for sound like that to be? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> it's a lot to write the, the definition. So let, let's go on, let, let me continue. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So these are, um, for this, all these are statements as a um, formal power series, and I'm, I'm sorry, the board is too small, so I'll just continue here. Hmm? Yeah, we, so we, we have, uh, uh, so these are formal power series, and now we, we, we want to replace all of these by, by actually, um, uh, I mean, these are now a complex, power series, and we wonder whether these, uh, these, uh, these series now converge. 
And that's what the statement will, will be about. So we, I have to see, say what I mean by, by z to the n. So now, you, now here we pass from formal power series to actual power series. Yeah, yeah, here, here, yeah, right. We, we make here a, a transition. We, we were in form, formal power series. We formulate this as formal power series, and now we view it as, as actual power series uh, by, by uh, choosing here the branch of the logarithm. And now we wonder whether these, uh, these power series do converge, make sense, and how they are related. So the, the statement of the definition of an intertwining operator is you can define that is there, there are these formal power series, and then if you evaluate them in this uh, type, call it, let's call this correlation functions, then they become actual, form, uh, actual power series. What do you mean actual power series? What does that mean? Well, these are now, uh, uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, now just uh, all you do is instead of uh, Z1 and uh, Z2 being formal uh, uh, variables, they are now complex variables. Let me please go on, okay? Can you, can you just write down the space where these things live in? I mean, you know, like all these, all these so all, all three uh, live in the space. Um. So of, of so you have uh, any power of x2, I guess. Any power of, uh, yeah, and, and then if you identify it like, okay, yeah, z2, x2, um, uh, any power of uh, x2 is allowed. Um, then of uh, z1, it's only integer powers that appear. And then we have, uh, and then we also have logarithms of, uh, of x2 appearing. Uh, and I guess you can, instead of x2, you can write z2. I can write z2. that's precisely the point of this, uh, yeah. of this log business. I, I don't understand. What, what don't you understand? I, I it's like two series. How, how this, uh, I don't, the most basic I don't understand. What is e to the n l z2? Like where, where does that thing live? Well, uh, Z2, Z2 is just a complex uh, variable. But just in what space of E to the N? Even it's like preserved, preserved series. So you have, I mean, this yeah, is... Yeah, no, but the question is different. I mean, it's just, that's complex number, that's the question. Yeah. But now we're starting to want to make sense of this. Uh, what to is the answer to the question? E to, e to the N L Z2, that's some simple number. In what space does it live? Complex number. Yeah, it's just a complex number. Z2 is not a complex number, it's a very simple. Well, it's going to be. This is now, a, I mean, it's just a complex function now. So e to the n l z2, it's a, it's a holomorphic function, it's, like a, it's a function defined somewhere in the complex plane, that's what it is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Any other question? Yes. Yes. And, and I also don't understand then that this, this formula you wrote on the, 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 the space that you wrote. Mm -hmm. Who supposedly lives in this space? So. <coughs> Who's, uh, so, uh, th these are, so. So these three things are power series in this uh, space, and now if I uh, and now I, I change the picture and I view this as complex valued functions. So these are these three things before or after you specialize at x to the n. After I I, sp I specialize uh, to this, and then and then I in, uh, I take them as functions. No, on no, no, the thing you've written there that's what it is before you specialize. Yeah, that's before I specialize. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and of course, now I have to uh, say that uh, I have to put some condition on it so that it makes sense to specialize. Right? 
So, so, in, uh, so, so, so this, yeah. Yeah. So, the statement is that, um, so these are, these statements are absolutely convergent in respective domains in the regions. So the, for the first one, we want Z1 have larger at absolute value than Z2. In the second case, we switch the order. And in the third case, we want Z2 to be larger than the absolute value of Z minus, Z1 minus Z2. And let me just uh, call this case A, B, and C, which are uh, the expressions here, A, B, C. Okay. So, so we want each, each, uh, each of uh, these expressions so to converge in a certain region, and uh, please compare that to the duality, that's extremely analogous. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, and uh, I mean, it's it just a very lengthy, uh, 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 definition and in particular it's quite hard uh, to come up with a, <laughs> to imagine uh, that examples of this exist or it's uh, uh, it, it is really uh, I mean this definition is uh, due to E.G. Huang which may maybe the first v version has been done by Frankel, Lepowski and Merman but, but uh, in, in this setting and uh, E.G. Huang he has uh, worked it for at least 15 years to, to formalize what physicists have said about two-dimensional conformal field theory. He has kept enormously in analogy and, uh, yeah. Yes? Um, and the last thing, C, are you missing the variable? So why, uh, curly y should have two inputs. Does it only have one? Curly y here in the last one? Yeah. Yeah, here's the comma. I think that's the internal, that's not the curly y comma, or maybe I'm wrong. No, the, the curly, so if we, if we have here, so here we, we have a, 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 a module action on M1, okay. so that gives us a, 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 power, a long series in M1, right? And, and so that's, that's the first input, and then we have the variable. Okay. So, so this is correct. Mm -hmm. So these are absolutely convergent in, in their regions and they converge to a common analytic, analytic function in two variables, in the variables z1 and z2. And it can be extended to a multivalued function only possible poles well what will it be right these are power series and z1 so sure, uh, surely we c might expect poles and uh, at z1 equals zero if you look at the third one at c we see there appear power series and z1 minus 2 so we also might expect, I mean, definitely do expect poles there. But uh, the statement is these are the only possible poles. And uh, 
and only possible branch points Well, our intertwining operator is a, a, a power series in this curly Z, so that means arbitrary powers of Z2 appear. So, of course, then we can expect branch points there and only possible branch points at Z2. Okay, so that concludes the definition. Sorry, what's the branch point? What's the, uh, the branch points? I, I, we, we can here have a fraction or even uh, complex uh, powers of Z2. So then uh, they, they will give us what the part. Hmm? I don't know, I think after Z2, so then uh, I, I mean, I, 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 that Z2 is a, a possible branch point somehow, so. Uh, what, what, it, what it means is uh, uh, that uh, um, so what it, what it means is this uh, uh, so that um, we, we have these uh, three um, three expressions that converge in their respective domains there exists a common analytic uh, function and what can this function have it can uh, can have poles at, at these points and and there will also possibly appear fractional powers of C2. That's what it means. Or complex powers of C2. So the, the, the answer will be um, a, a, a series in, uh, will be a Laurent series in, in these two. So you can have poles there and you can, and, and here you can have arbitrary powers. That's what it means. It's really defined on a cover. The cover is branched along C2 to zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's maybe the best way to phrase it, yeah. That's uh, right, why you're on Z2 and not Z2 to zero. Z2 to zero. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Hmm? Okay. Um, What log x is doing, so um, uh, th this uh, has to uh, do with the uh, non-semi-simplicity. So in yeah. So this this log x two that uh, it also already appeared. Uh, what I raised here, and remember, this intertwining operator is this uh, power. Yeah, uh, so uh, the x uh, the x two is he appearing here, and uh, uh, here. So you take this for example. Uh, uh, so this uh, so this one uh, so this one uh, and the, the same for all three here is an element of of this one replacing z two by x two. Uh, so, and now I. I So all, all three are elements of this. Okay. So now uh, I, uh, I can just uh, do this replacement. And then I can ask whether this converges as an analytic function in a certain, uh, uh, as an analytic function and two variables in a certain domain. Then I uh, replace uh, uh, log x uh, x two by uh, by this uh, by this L, uh, this chosen branch of z two. Right, this, this is this is uh, in here. Here had it before. This. Uh, Um, y 
yeah, it would mean pointwise. I think so. Um. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. I think this action can show complicated, so can you show us some examples? Yes. Uh, so I, uh, I, I think it's a, in fact a good time for for our first break. Um, this, so this morning I simply did what I had to do. I had to give you the definition, right? And uh, and uh, it's n not easy to come up with an example. And I I hope after the maybe one or two lectures it will take me to give you an example. Okay, but but this is what I will do next, and it's uh, it's the example that. Uh, that, that you can do in a, in, a, in a quite some generality. And it's by, by far, by very, very far, the simplest example one can give. Yeah, so let's, let's have a break until 45 and then go on. Actually, before you promised us there was some trivial example, like V acting on itself and then V acting on N. Mm -hmm. but, uh, is this also true for those or is this maybe not true for those? Yeah, yeah, that's all true for those. In, in the trivial examples, yeah. right? In, in the trivial examples, we already had the duality statement, yeah. right? And and, and that, yeah. And and uh, and uh, from from that, the convergence is immediate. But why? I mean, the power series is an arbitrary coefficient, so you don't have to converge anything. Uh, Um, well, it, it holds for those, um, and now you would like a quick way to see that? Hmm? Yeah. Um, So I, I, I don't know at the top of my head, but I can do, uh, tell you one thing you can do. So there, there's a, so the, the very first thing is you, you try to find as many equivalent definitions of all the things you have. So for, for VOA, you, it turns out locality can be replaced by duality and also by a Jacobi identity. I didn't present that. Then it turns out for a module, locality can be replaced by duality and a Jacobi identity. And for intertwining operators, it turns out uh, locality doesn't, there is no really good locality axiom, but uh, you have a duality type axiom and you also have a Jacobi identity. Now the very first basic thing is you, you, you prove that these are equivalent, right? And now it turns out the Jacobi identity for intertwining operators in the, in the trivial examples, V and M, are exactly the same as the Jacobi identity, uh, the original ones. And, and yeah, and, and the, the, so the Jacobi identity statement is completely free of convergence and it's hard work to show that these things are equivalent. And, but uh, uh, but from, from that, you, so that means if you have done all that work, you know immediately that, that these are correct. But uh, yeah, but, but you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, I, would uh, I wouldn't know at the immediately how to how to see the convergence here. Uh, for, so, so there was no reason you had to work with all this formal power series. You put it in the formal series in the beginning. Yes, uh, but, but uh, I, it, it's just as, uh, as, uh, as usual. You, you have the different things, and some are good, better for one, some and some for an, another. And um, uh, conceptually, it, uh, it might uh, have been the best thing to, to do everything immediately analytically. Um, you, you would just have had a hard time to, to get to VOAs in the first place. <laughs>